Hello and welcome to another episode of What It Was Cool, the show where we talk about anything and everything that is cool in the world today. I am Detective Daniel Paul Crow, and why am I a detective all of a sudden? Well, on this episode, we're telling the story of Anarchy Pro. I sit down with Adrian Kasser, the owner and promoter of Anarchy Pro. We talk about the early beginnings of Anarchy Pro, how the first event went, and what is the future for Anarchy Pro. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the definitive history of Anarchy Pro. Thank you so much for being part of the show. Now, um, wow, we, we were talking so much that we have, you know, we, we thought we were going to go right through, but we've just been going on different tangents, and we're really here to talk about Anarchy Pro. Um, but firstly, so for people under- can understand, how old are you exactly? How old am I? Yeah. Okay. I am 19 years old. I turned 20 next year in June. So probably I'm the second youngest promoter that's ever run a show in Victoria. First time I met first time I met this young man. Um you know I I I knew he was young, but I didn't know he was that young now until to, until tonight. And um he puts me to shame because like like at 19 I was a failed actor and musician like i wasn't doing anything like this extravagant you know running a running and promoting a, a wrestling company but kudos to you my friend because mm. man like that takes a lot of balls to do yeah um yeah it was originally i thought i was gonna do that like <laughs> years like years years later originally but you so before like anarchy became a thing, I ran an Ethed promotion that was a 2K like promotion mm-hmm. called Brutal Wrestling. A lot of using a lot of you know the Victorian Australian talent and doing like an Ethed sort of stuff. We have we went for like five years. So just just so, so a lot of people don't know what's an what's an Ethed exactly. So it's basically like esports. So it's a it's trying to like simulate what is it like simulate reality like sort of like making your own fed i basically recorded the matches on like a capture card from my console and like did like all the editing to it uploaded it a lot of people have done it um and yeah we went for like five years so and when we stopped was a month after our fifth year anniversary. Yeah. Um, well, actually, no. We closed doors two months after. We were actually approaching the one-year anniversary of the closure of Brutal Wrestling. <laughs> I think tomorrow or the day after. Um, so about... So the fifth year anniversary show took place in June... Two weeks before that, I turned 18. Mm-hmm. The week after it, I got reached out to by um Australian wrestler by the name of Zuzu. He reached out to me because I, as a lot of people may know, I have a background in video editing, graphics design, and all that sort of stuff, and filming. So he reached out to me to do more of like a production-wise sort of role in it. Mm. And... It di- unfortunately that didn't happen, and then about a month later in July last year, he reached out to me to start like a proper like the he wanted me to be the booker of a promotion and a show that he wanted to do like a family friendly wrestling show in Melbourne. There were a lot of like names going on in my head for like what to call the promotion. Mm. One of the names that I really liked, but we couldn't use it, was Perchance to Dream. Okay. What, why couldn't you use that? For, for instance? Uh, Dream. A oh. deathmatch tournament. Oh, right, right, right. And I don't want to get... I do not want to be on Joel Bateman's bad side. He is a scary man. Mm. Um. So that name was out of the water. We was, I was thinking maybe run uh in my local area of Tarnate, calling it TPW Tarnate Pro Wrestling. But that really would have restricted us because there's only really one venue you can run wrestling in in Tarnate. And 
yeah, eh, probably not the best idea. And then um, I was brainstorming names because my job was the creative aspect of the promotion, how it looks, how it sounds, how like the online presentation side of it in a way. Yeah, I put the shows together, everything. So I came up with Anarchy Pro, and Zuzu really liked it. We officially launched. We posted, uh, we started an account. We followed a bunch of wrestlers' accounts, and we put up a really like it was a kind of a cryptic post saying "We are Anarchy," and it was because we had two logos. We had this one and the original one. Mm-hmm. Uh, the original one I, I hate <laughs> with a burning passion. And then due to some unfortunate circumstances, Zuzu left the project. Unfortunately, I had two choices because we were already announced. We had so much positive, you know, like media presence over for like the past two weeks at that point. I was thinking, do we, you know, like... Do we not run? Do we run or just forget about it? So I made the decision to run it by myself and get as much advice and help as possible. So, yeah, so we had a lot, like, on the actual day we actually announced, we had so many, like, people, like, messaging us, people that rent rings, promoters saying if I needed one advice and people just saying they want to be a part of it, mm. which was very overwhelming when we got those messages. So then we basically took like, we spent like most of September and October, like posting kind of cryptic posters, like posts and etc. Then mid October, we had our first show date official, which was this one right here. Yep. When Legends Rise. Um, so we had that booked in for March the 2023, at which was meant to be the 3011 arena, but didn't happen. Unfortunately not. And yeah, so we spent the next couple of weeks announcing members of our roster. Our first roster member was Kid Valiant, which was probably the best first choice we could have done. Same with like wrestlers like Tali, uh, Joel, Broderick, all that stuff. Then flash forward to December, we had um, a video come out, basically set to the song um, Anarchy in the UK mm-hmm. by the Sex Pistols, yep. which is actually the official like Anarchy theme, which is sick. It was amazing when when because like. I remember the the the, the promotions uh, that were coming out on Instagram and you know this and this and this. That was what was coming into my head that you were doing it. And then the first video when you had when you put it out, it's like, yes, this is this is going to be amazing. Yeah. Um. Originally, that song was brought to me as a dare to put into that video because I was trying to figure out what song to use. I think mm. I went for a few songs. One of them being. A remix to the greatest show, but that sounds like a bit of an ego trip. Okay, oh, the one uh, from the uh, the world's greatest showman. Yeah, but it was like a remix to it. Okay, so that, and then, or just use the song we're going to use for the show, "When Legends Rise" by Godsmack. Mm-hmm. Um, so then he said, "Dude, this song fits your brand perfectly." Works really well. I dare you to put it in. I said, okay, I'll do it. Did. And yeah, it really does fit perfectly well for what we, you know, have as a promotion. Yeah. And yeah, so we announced the show date. And I think a week or two later, I had a podcast appearance with um, guests on your pod. Caught in conversation. Yep. John L. Crossfire, the, the man himself. Absolutely fantastic uh podcast, which you should definitely check out wherever you get podcasts. And why you do that, why you do that, check out um the episode where I've had him on because he's a f- top bloke. Absolutely amazing. Agreed. Fully mm. agreed. 
Um, so then we announced our first match for the show, which was Joel and Tali. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, so Brent, we, I spent like most of January, December, February filming some really cool vignettes, promos, all that cool, sort of cool stuff. Originally, the first Anarchy show was a one and done, originally. Mm. Like a one off. You can kind of say it kind of is, but um, then in January, I had a few, I thought, screw it. It's locking a bunch of dates the year. So, how we were going to run were tri monthly. Mm-hmm. So, our first show would have been in March, second June, then September, then December. Unfortunately, those shows aren't happening. Well, it postponed for to like further notice. The first show it had had a lot of its pros and cons. I learned that I how how much I appreciate what promoters do and how hard it is to run a show because I had no idea what I was doing. So, yeah, there was a lot of stuff that I learned throughout that whole day. And a lot of stuff that I learned not to do. <laughs> well, let, let's let's dial back a little bit, and um, before we get into the the actual show day, you're you've already got a whole bunch of talent booked. Talk me through of how you got the matches together. You know, you know, who, did you have a set structure, or did you you know you already booked these people in? Anyway, okay, I want them to do this, or did it, you know, just like talk me through. So, um. I spent most, so October was putting together the card and checking availabilities for the show. So the first match that got official, like in real life got official was Joel and Tali because Joel was using like his kit. We were using his kit for the DMDU stuff. Mm -hmm. And yeah, then um, I reached out to Broderick Valentine because I wanted him in the main event. Because mm-hmm. Broderick is so good, he's amazingly talented. I mm. love his work. Uh so I was asking him, "Who do you want to wrestle?" As like, because he was it was structured as him as a face, his opponent be a heel. He gave me a bunch of like choices: Edward Dusk, Murdoch, mm-hmm. uh, Jordan Sampson, mm-hmm. and Ryan Rapid. Ryan Rapid responded pretty quickly. At that point, I've only at that point I have only have seen him once wrestle live. That was like at a benefit show, which I'm wearing the shirt underneath here, wrestling for a leaf. Ah. That was run by Joel Bateman back in 2020. Wow. So it was like a bushfire relief show. So at the Melbourne Aces Arena. I vaguely, I vagely remember this, but it was a time where I still wasn't like fully into the wrestling scene again yeah. in Australia. So, yeah, and I wasn't that familiar with his work, but when I told, because I remember messaging, I was talking, I think, to Carlo. I mentioned what the main event was going to be, hmm. and he, I, I got the biggest, uh, I got a reaction of him being excited and shocked. When I mentioned what the main event was, and he was just like, dude, this match is going to be amazing. Mm. And he couldn't believe that I haven't seen Rapid like properly because the first time I saw him was the Four Corners tag. Yeah. So not that much time to shine and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, um, they had Broderick and Rapid had that match and it was so good. Oh, it was it was absolutely amazing, man! And like I, I still remember the day I, um, got the post saying that uh, you signed Ryan Rapid to first product, and I went, "Holy sh!" Like I, I, I haven't seen Ryan outside of uh, PCW before, so mm-hmm. you know. But I always, but I, but I know how great his work is, and and you know I know you, you haven't really seen him much live. But if anyone hasn't seen him live and only seen the Anarchy show, make sure to check out the PCW Network, nine ninety five per month, um, for all this wrestling content and check out Ryan's ma- uh, matches there because they're just he's f- amazing. That's a cheeky plug. Um, but he, uh, look, he 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 never disappoints. 
that man. Yeah. And having seen Broderick's work at that point more than what I had seen before, um, I was like, Sh- this is this is going to be easily match of the year contender because yeah. you got a guy who's a high flyer and just just goes like no tomorrow, and a guy who's a high flyer but all rounder. Yeah, meeting. There's not there's nothing nothing else online. Just two guys just going at it. Fucking amazing! Like it just oh that that that's. That was the selling point for me why I wanted to go to the show. But if you guys know, um, unfortunately, I didn't attend the show because of you know what happened with my nephew at that time. But that's a story for another time. But f- that 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 was the the selling point for me, man. And I um yeah, can't believe you you made it happen, man. That was that's fantastic. Um, and then we ha- that was one of two opening ground matches of our heavyweight title tourney. Hmm. The other one, which. It, it was a really good match as well. It was Charlie v Craven? Yes. Uh long story short, uh, week of the show. Um, so he was meant to fly in on the Thursday, like night, mm-hmm. to come to Melbourne because he lives all the way in Perth. Yeah. His flight got cancelled. Bullshit. Really? Nope. Oh. Not sh- His flight got cancelled. And there were no available flights in Perth to go to Melbourne the day after until, like, I think it was Monday. So, Craven, the legend he is, he drove all the way, he drove, like, four hours to Brisbane and took a flight from there to Melbourne. What the hell, that's commitment, and... I've I've got so much respect for him for doing that. I wow, he didn't have like I was shocked that he did it. I I like if he missed his flight, that's fair enough. Like yeah. happens, but the fact that he did that meant the absolute world to me because that would have been that was his first match in Melbourne since 2019. Mm. So yeah, it was because his last match in Melbourne was against Aiden Miller. At an APW show. Whoa. Okay. So at that point, I think that was one of three of Craven's times he's wrestled in Melbourne. So first one was against Crash, then Miller, then finally Charlie. Right. So the fact that he did that, that meant so much to me. Hmm. I, I, I... I, I hadn't heard of Craven um until the announcement and then when I finally watched the uh yeah. the replay on, on YouTube, I was amazed. I've been watching a lot of his stuff on YouTube now and mm-hmm. I'm just I can't like I just can't handle like how amazing this guy is and I, you know, he should, yeah. he should he should come to Melbourne a lot more. But um <laughs> but just hearing this story about him. Oh, dead set legend. Like yeah. Like you said, he didn't have to do that, but that that's that's commitment, and that, and that's man, I I I um I got so much respect for the guy now, you know. Mm-hmm. When I when I have him on the show eventually, um, you know, I've got to have to ask him like, why is he so loyal? And you know, I, I'm, I've got to thank him for 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 doing this for you because, uh, mm-hmm. literally, he like you said, he didn't have to do that, mm. Mm. but he did, which because so. After the show, he was contacting me about um, the future dates. Yeah. Because he really enjoyed wrestling Charlie and also really enjoyed wrestling in front of the Melbourne crowd. Mm. So he said, dude, I will get the cheapest flights possible and wrestle for you because, dude, this was so much fun and you should be really proud of yourself. And that's, that's a great um, feedback to get on your first show, brother. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So he will definitely be back in Anarchy because I have got him on my wall. What, this is, I took this off my wall this morning because I thought I'll probably put it in the background. But yeah, he is so good. Um, I'm trying to get 
Craven and Rapid booked at MXW mm-hmm. because, yeah, they will make the show amazing. Well, even better than, much more better. That's the right word to use. Man, that 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 that, that just that's up to, <laughs> you know, if this is a cartoon, you'd be seeing dollar signs going on my eyes right now, just like ding 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 ding. Like, yeah. Oh. God. One thing that I remember when we had the announcement of Charlie the Craven, everyone was thinking it was going to be Craven v. Kid Valiant, Craven v. Broderick, v. Ryan Rapid, v. Chris Law, v. Joel Bateman. Mm. No one was expecting Charlie. Well, I hadn't heard of Charlie yet until until um, she was announced, and yeah. um, I'm right because that was a, i think she, that was the second match i ever saw of her because the mm. first one i ever saw was uh her um and will taking on B, uh i think it was um, Valido, Valido and uh and Nova Nichols, Nichols at um how uh house party at pandemonium 2.0 and then i and then i got to saw the replay of um anarchy and i went he's amazing and i've become yeah. a massive fan of her now mm. yeah she's really good um, I'm very proud of how far they've come because Charlie back in 2021 or 2022 moved all the way to Melbourne from Tassie. Oh, so she's not from she's not from Victoria. Yeah. Oh, she's, sh- from, she's originally from Tasmania because I said in the introductions for their match, originally from Tasmania, but now residing in Geelong, Victoria. Oh, man. I I didn't even notice that when when you're doing the uh doing the intros, but then again, like because my hearing, I, I could I could barely hear the the um the announcements half the time anyway. It's okay, no one really really could hear it because a I lost my voice, b the mic wasn't working, and c yeah I could barely talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you could have just gone. You could have gone. Oh, you know, it's, he's just old. You know, he, he you know the, the, you know of course I've got to. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I would have believed you too because I'm just like because the amount of times I can't hear anything, I'm like okay, yeah, go go go. Um, so so we got that we got those those matches through. Um, I think the next one after that was that the tag match with uh, Conflict Axiom for yes, yes, yes. The introduction to the tag division. Yeah, with uh, the, with these guys weren't here. It's um, out of focus. Oh, it's out of focus. It doesn't matter. Puffy Axiom stuff. Uh, you know, make sure to get your coasters. And um... I don't blame him. Hmm? Marshall's a wanker. I can say that. I can get away with it. You know what? The, the, the... I can't. I can't put up with with <laughs> shit talk like that. You want to know why? Because you didn't Why? say, because you didn't say this. Make sure you use the hashtag James Marshall on your face. Let's make it happen. Um, <laughs> I'll sub. I'm his wrestling son. <laughs> I um, I was uh, so excited when I when I saw that because the um, month before was it the month of no 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 it would have been maybe the week before that was announced. They were at, uh, I'm talking about B Squared here. They were at uh, DMDU, mm. and it was the second match that I ever saw of it because I saw obviously saw their debut and I saw mm. uh, this next match, and they f- blew it out of the ballpark, man. Mm. It, they were so it amazing. Did. And having seen, um, I was going to call them the Caliber Boys, the Copley uh, <laughs> uh, Axiom uh, rise up, uh, and you know I was like, okay, this is going to be another great match. I know they've already fought before, but you know they've got. B squared now got two matches under their belt and they're they're already killing it. Yeah. This is gonna be another this is gonna be another amazing match, and it absolutely was. Yeah. And with the whole uh mischievous finish of the match. Yeah, you know. Yeah, with the whole uh yeah, Marshall didn't tag well Marshall oh, no, Blake Curtis didn't tag Marshall in. Well, you know, like as much as I give hang sh- on James Marshall, you know, I've, I've always got a room for the whole home side because, you know, I am the simp for and the uh, unofficial mascot for Conflict Axiom. Um, <laughs> you know, so I was happy with the win. Yeah, B squared, whenever we come back, they are 100% dying to get back at Conflict Axiom for that cheap win. Oh, trust me. Whenever whenever I see them and I've got the Conflict Axiom stuff on, they go, mate, take that off. I'm like, <laughs> 
I'm not, I, I said, I'm not on your payroll, boys. Well, I know we're mates, but I'm not on your payroll. They are, I'm on there. So I've got to represent the home side, guys. <laughs> <laughs> So after after that after that match, you filmed a vignette with um, an old buddy of mine. Well, I call him a buddy. He call he calls me an asshole because he calls me a uh, Jason Crash fanboy. Uh, you had uh, Kid Valiant mm. lovely sit on your lap and stroke oh, yeah. your, and stroke your beautiful beard. Thank you for a match. What happened there? Uh so Kid Valiant. He was the number one roster announcement draft mm-hmm. pick. All that sort of thing. Um, there were a bunch of matches already announced, and he just didn't have the match announced. And he was very, from what I know, very furious to throw a crock at me. Oh god, you kids and your crocs! You know, just <laughs> it, it, see. Back in my day, it'd be it, it'd either be a can or a bottle. You know, like crocs. That's not going to hurt anybody. Get 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 a bit of glass in your son. Come on, dang. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm from Werribee. I can I can handle a bit of glass in. <laughs> oh, I remember at DMDU last week. Um, I remember someone in the crowd they said because i think it was during the death match and i remember someone yelling from the crowd uh i think i think they yelled glass him and i said we're in hoppers not where be <laughs> <laughs> even though they're like five minutes apart from each other <laughs> which is the funny part. okay anyone that tells me that they are close and are in the same area Go f- yourself because they are two separate, completely separate f- suburbs. It's like so. I I, I live I live in Mulgrave, all right, oh, yeah. and right next to right next to it is Springvale. Now, obviously, Springvale now is a lot more nicer. It's not what it used to be in the nineties or even to the late two thousands. Oh, yeah. But in the nineties, you literally take two steps and go one step over to Springvale. It is a completely different. F- ball game and that's exactly the same thing with these two suburbs here i'm sorry but <laughs> yeah anyone tells me that they're they're in the same the same sort of thing go for yourself it's not the same <laughs> yeah with like yeah with working in werribee it and working in hoppers it's very very different oh yeah <laughs> i've done, i i i've worked i've worked there and yeah i can honestly say it's ex- <laughs> oh it's so oh, well, especially yeah, we, we could we could go all day with this one Especially with working at a bottle in both suburbs. Oh, bless you, man. I don't, I don't think I have the balls. To do that. <laughs> I have so many stories about working at working in Werribee. You're working in a bottle, it's oh Jesus Christ! How are oh. you? How are you still alive? I don't know. Um, I've been threatened. Someone threatened to glass me. Oh man. And especially because where I worked was like near a nightclub. Oh no! <laughs> so, oh god, which isn't great. So, I don't appreciate that. No, um, um, everyone who's watching this, uh, say say a prayer for Adrian when he goes to work. Oh, I don't work no. there anymore. Oh I'm my back god. Here. Um, yeah, it's been months since I worked in Werribee. Thank God. Yeah. But yeah, um, what were we going on about before? Uh, talking about, so we're talking about um KV. Uh, oh, so we're talking to Crocs and we're talking about glassing. Uh, so that, well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we're uh, and obviously you know he was cracking the shits being a baby. Um, oh, KV, KV, I'm I'm just in what character, mate. Don't don't come I'm at not me. Say- again. I'm not saying anything. Oh god! When I have him on heat again, I, I guarantee he's probably gonna, you know, say, "Oh, let's just meet in the same room," and then halfway through the interview, <laughs> um, yeah. But so he, you're, you're, he, he's the man. Oh, I'm not, I'm never gonna work again. Um, <laughs> he's uh, so he's he's demanding a match. You are obviously announcing. Uh, now I'm trying to remember who the first person was. So it would have been Zane Zod. Zane Zodiac. That's right, Zane Zodiac. But unfortunately, due to him retiring, he wasn't in the match. Mm. 
So, yeah, it was a six-way scramble, and the winner got bragging rights in Anarchy Pro. Mm. So, as you probably know from watching the show, the bragging rights were the final tournament entry into our heavyweight title tournament, Mm -hmm. which Kid Valiant, unfortunately, won. Um, no, 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 fortunately, fortunately, he won, he won, he was, it was a good, good win, yeah? yeah, 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 good win, yeah, 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 100% clean, yeah, shockingly. Um, and then because I had a feeling this would happen to play some mind games, we had his uh trainer come out, revealed as his opponent for the next show, mm. Jason the Crusher Cole. Mm-hmm. So it was a bit of a low blow, but. And he got very, and he got very personal with uh, the old kid, um, mm. you know, calling him by his real name. Uh, call, uh, Crusher do, uh, doing calling himself by his real name as well. That was yes. uh, out of left field, but I think it it did get to him. Mm. Mm. Indeed, yeah. That match is going to be really good. Like, I I know that match has nearly happened multiple times, and whenever that match is going to happen. I'm more than excited for it because mm. they are going to kill it. Crusher. I've known Crusher. First time I wrestled, saw him wrestle was when I was 13. And me as an adult. Yeah. It's very surreal. Mm. So, and yeah, they're going to absolutely tear the house down. Yeah. Uh, definitely. Definitely. I'm very, very excited for that one. Now, I think there was one last match that was... Oh, no, there were two because one was the dark match. Now, the final match that was uh, there was uh, originally scheduled for Jason Crash versus Chris Law, and I don't actually remember what happened because Chris, did Chris get injured here? Yeah, and- he got injured at yeah. APW Pandemonium. He, I think he fractured his ankle. Oh, yeah, okay. So, um, unfortunately, he did, so... We had to get a replacement, which was the Madman Hex. How did that come about? Because uh, you know, like that, because that was uh, that was the day before days? the show. The day before the show. Okay, yeah. So we were scrambling for a replacement, and I was trying to figure find someone because it was the day before the show. I don't know. So it was announced the day before the show, but I found out that Law had to unfortunately pull out two days before the show. Yeah. So I spent a day trying to find a replacement. Not a lot of people were available such last minute. Mm-hmm. And yeah, Hex jumped up the opportunity. So. But on him. Uh, that, that, but, that, 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 that's. Commitment it to you, man, because like 24 hours notice and to get something like that, that's really good. Unfortunately, it didn't really go well for Hex. Crash went over, and well, I'm, I'm happy. I'm, I'm I'm happy that Crash won. You know, I mean, supposedly so I'm are, a, uh, you supposedly. Are a Jason Crash fanboy. Oh. Yeah, I am. I, yeah, <laughs> I can't lie. But yes, I am. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, who isn't? Okay, so we opened the second half of me being interrupted mm-hmm. by Bam Bam Terry Shaw. Mm-hmm. Uh, he just felt like being a dick and then out of nowhere Rochelle Rogue interrupted him had an impromptu match and he got knocked the f*** out yeah he did as Jackson McLean said on commentary he got knocked the f*** out <laughs> and yeah made very quick work then after that we had Joel Bateman Vitali. Bateman won via a very, very, very cool lariat. And then after that, we had the semi-main, which was the Hunter... Well, I'll say I'll say the nickname that no one gets to say. The hard c- Robbie Parker. I only, like, no, I, that's, that's actually I, his I nickname. Know, I, know, I know it is, but I only just discovered this today because uh, I was looking at photos... Uh... <laughs> Of um of Robbie because obviously the well this is going to come out a week after the Cooters episode came out mm. and I was looking at and his shirt I was like 
what? Hang, hang on, what? And I got and because yeah. I'm old, I got, got my glass set and I looked and went, <laughs> You're f- kidding me. I always thought they said something. <laughs> I thought I because. I'd seen Robbie a few times. I never noticed that that was what it actually said on his um, yeah. shirt. Mm. Yeah, I never noticed it until someone pointed it out for me. Like when they saw the match graphic, the Robbie Parker versus Manos, mm. and yeah, so Robbie Parker called out the Overlord Manos because Manos has been, in a way, ducking him for a while as not he's had Robbie Parker has had Manos's attention but there's been nothing of it mm. unfortunately the gray num gray's numbers didn't go well for Robbie and Bamford and after them winning out of nowhere they attacked them and yeah yeah and very cowardly from the gray mm, agreed and then after that, which was the match that's been talked about so many times for months, and rightfully so, the main event. Yep. Ryan Rapid v. Broderick Valentine. Well, Ryan Rapid with Carl Grove and Broderick with Natasha. Now, I um, I am so happy with this match that you obviously got... Uh, you know, Natasha, because obviously she's married to Broderick. Um, but the fact that you got Kyle, uh, Kyle, Kyle, <laughs> our old body socks. Uh, Kyle. Oh, oh, my God, he's going to f***ing kill me because I, I, don't think, <laughs> I don't think he even likes, it, likes being called that, but I, I've, I've always known him as socks, and I'm going to refer to him as socks. Um, <laughs> like, if you if you know the history of uh, of them in, P, in PCW, you know, this was, this for me was just like, it's like turning back the clock, you know, and the nostalgia there for me was was so was so good, and I just I wish I was there to witness it in person because mm-hmm. there were just it, it it's it, it it was a dream match that I didn't know I wanted to see, but I'm glad we got it, and we had this it, young man to do uh, to thank for it. It was actually the second time it's happened. This what has happened. That- before. So um the first time these guys have wrestled, this was about when they when Broderick's and Rapid started. Like Rapid was like a year or two in, Broderick like had like it was one of his first matches. Was this when he was part of in, the um the pedigree? No, nah, this is at PCW. Yeah, no, this is this, it, oh, it's it, PCW, it, it, but not yeah. like something. I'm not sure I'm not I know it. Rapid was a bad guy then as mm. he's Known for, but Broderick, I think this was a, a PCW slam show. Okay. So, yeah, if we come back, I'd love to run that back and do another match or a rubber match. You know, just think it's outside the box here. Have it, have, have them another one, but have a third person come in. They have a th- like, and, and, uh, God, I don't. I, I hate playing fantasy booker here, but I, I just, like, it's just, this is, this is just, just me being a fan, being a mark. Just, it's, it's like you're having two great high flyers there. It's like um, Samoa Joe and Christopher Daniels, and they got mm-hmm. Samoa Joe into this. I don't know who the Samoa Joe will be in this sort of thing. Um, I knew, th- I knew that was going to fall eventually. Um, <laughs> These posters just found down. That's okay. <laughs> it didn't break. It didn't break. So that's it's all good. Yeah. But no, <laughs> um, I'm just thinking, like, who could who could be the third? Uh, Murdoch. It would either be Murdoch, Murdoch, or or Castone, or or I have I have, oh my god, I can't think of his f-ing name. Um, I had I can think of one, but he is currently retired. Oh if, yeah, hang on, hang on. I think I know. Yeah, hang on. You say it. Oh, hang on. Wait, we'll say it after three. One, two, three. Roy Danny Chambers. Psycho. Oh, f- it's even better. I was gonna say Roy Chambers, but yeah, Danny Psycho. Yeah, that would be perfect. Yeah, I'm. Oh, he's such a good worker. He was so good, and he's yeah. He he's living his best life currently. He's a tattoo artist in Phuket or something, isn't he? Um, and I think he's also a dog. I think he's a dog racer. Or something. Okay. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's a tattoo artist as well. So yeah. Um, yeah. Or screw it, Robbie Eagles. Yeah, I'm not, Maybe. I don't know. Um, I don't, I I love Robbie. I'm just I'm just because I'm. I'm I'm really old school though. Like you know, like like I've said on this show multiple times. I I I religiously was going to PCW for so many years. I'm just thinking of people who I you know was in that in that time frame. So like like Murdoch's a good choice. Cast Stone's a good choice. Um, Roy, Roy Chambers is another good one. But I think you have hit the nail on the uh, hit, hit the nail on the coffin there. Um, Danny Psycho. That would be an amazing match to see. Mm. Mm. His retirement match was really good. It yeah, was against I've, Brooksy. Yeah, I never got the saw. I never got the saw that live. I did see it on. Um, oh my god, was it Fight TV and, or something? I can't remember. Or the Vimeo page that they have. Yeah. Um, yeah. it's a good match. Oh, f- it was amazing. Uh, but yeah, whenever you get Psycho and 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 Brooksy in the in the same match, it, it, it's just mm. yeah. chef's kiss. Um, as two eleven would say. Um. But yeah, look, it was an absolute great card. Um, you also had a dark match, which we don't generally see a lot of. Mm. Um, but if you guys have seen the reaction video to that one, um, <laughs> it was a good match. But the the my biggest um thing with this one, and I know you never intended intended it to be this way, but having Xavier Black, that man's a scary man. He Ooh, now yeah. be- he now belongs in this growing list of people who I'm actually genuinely scared of, and, and and because the episode where I actually talk about this will not come out until after this one, I'm not going to name who it is, but he's now in the top uh, seven because uh, because mm. yeah, I've talked to number three and I've talked to number five. Oh, so I sh- yeah, no, sorry, number six. Sorry, I haven't talked to number five yet, mm. um, but. That man's scary, but it was an absolutely great match. But I want to ask, how did you get? How did you d- decide to have both Xavier, Ace, so both all three, and um, Luke on there? What prompted you to get those three in? So originally, it was always going to be Luke and oh, Ace. Ace, can you beep that, please. I will, please. Um, Ace Shack, um, because I really wanted to give them a go. Because after I saw. A Shaq's match against Joel Bateman back in January. I was so impressed. And I regret putting him in the dark match because he should have been on the main show. Mm. But what can you do? Um well yeah, you, you make sure that the next show he's on he's on the he's on the main show, man. That's uh, that's, that's, that's you can do. That's <laughs> the plan. <laughs> well, A Shaq is the dark match king. That's actually a legitimate nickname. He has. Hang on. What? Hang on. Why? Why? Why is he? The, what, why does he have that name? Is he? Because that's the only dark match I could think of that I've ever, can, like, I've ever seen him. I think he's had multiple. He's had like, he's one at DMDU, mm-hmm. and another at another company. I okay. Forgot which one it was. So, and it was on an episode of MXW. He back when he was a bad guy. He came out. And he literally started saying out loud, I'm the dark match king. Okay. And yeah, I don't know I don't know why I don't know why you you would you would be proud of that. <laughs> I, I want him to be the dark match king. I'll be like on the main event on the main event king, not the f- dark match, but mm-hmm. okay. Yeah. So yeah, Ash Sh- Shack is so good. One match I really want to see is him v Ryan Rapid. Oh man, that I I I already got dollar signs in my in my eyes for that one. I was talking to him about it, and I said, "Dude, I was talking to him about MXW, and I was like, dude, we need Ryan Rapid in MXW.' Like, imagine, I because oh, not a lot of people like that was the first time a Shaq ever saw Ryan Rapid wrestle, mm. and he said." What's he like? He's so good. Dude, he's really nice and he's really, really good, professional, all that stuff. So, yeah. Mm. And and how did Xavier come into the mix? 
So one thing that it was, so the answer to that is really that we wanted someone very experienced, someone that's a veteran, because both Luke and Ashak, they're very new to the Australian wrestling scene. So we wanted someone that with a lot of experience and see what they could do. Hmm. And they did really well. Oh, like like I said in the, in the thing, like Ace, no matter what, what I see him, he's fantastic. Luke, I am so surprised that he's fresh. You know, yeah. like he, he moves like he's been there for years. And it's not and not not to take any away from anybody else in that match. It's just it's like having have been at Luke's second ever match and then seeing him doing this and, and what he's been doing since then. I can't believe this is his first year. I really can't. Mm. I, I, I can't stress how much um this kid is just absolutely amazing. I can't wait to see what the next few years and his entire career is going to be like if his first year is just this fantastic. Indeed. Like, Reznor, he... So, origin- I never, I never, I found out about Reznor from James Marshall mm. because he's like, hey, I've got this, he, we've got a rookie and he's really good. Give him a spot if you can. And I contacted him and yeah, rest is history. Well, James Marshall actually like being nice. That's, yeah, it's a shock. Yeah, no, I'm like, what? Yeah. Subscribe yeah. to James Marshall's OnlyFans. Yep. Hashtag James Marshall OnlyFans. Let's make it happen. We That's have the sure. film kit for it. <laughs> he you know, I, I, me I, for what I said. I said <laughs> I I I put this on um on Instagram stories the other day because I literally had this dream where he actually made one and I was so fing happy. I went to subscribe and it was just photos of me. <laughs> And I, you know, sounds like, oh you, know the, you know, the, you know, the, you know what the sad thing is. Having known him for this long now, I know that's exactly what he's gonna do, and yeah. I'm, and I'm fine with it. I will pop if he does that. This is like a pay per view. It's just you, <laughs> just me. Ah, oh, you know, as long as long as I as long as I get ten percent out of the proceeds from all that, I'm happy. I, I wouldn't care. Yeah, you gotta get the monies. Oh yeah, as Dan Housen always says, gotta get the monies. Um. Very nice, very evil. Um, oh God! Now, Marshall Housen. <laughs> Marshall Housen. Very nice, very evil, Marshall Housen. Oh my God! Um, oh my God! I, 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 I'd, I'd love to see that Dan Housen and and James Marshall do something together. That'd be inter- yeah. very interesting. Mm. Mm. Now, we obviously, uh, you had a title that was created, uh, which is in the background right now. We've we've obviously talked about this off camera, but we, I want to talk about it on camera because uh, look, I wasn't happy when I saw the design the first time, and <laughs> and I was like, oh, I was like, okay, you know, it's just, it's just a belt, you know, and I never wanted to, I didn't never want to give that kind of opinion out straight away. We saw, I, I mentioned it straight to you, and you went, I f-ing hate that title. <laughs> I'm well, trying not. To, I'm trying to be, remain positive. It's such a good design. I love it. No, nah, but I'll, I'll, I want to point out a couple of things with with this title. Um, and I'm not knocking the person who, who did this. <laughs> just, just as a wrestling fan, um, I noticed these things. <laughs> it was me who designed it. Oh, <laughs> I I drew the sketch and I oh. sent it to a graphics designer to like properly do it. So hang on, I'm just. <laughs> When we talked, he did not tell me that. He told me it was somebody else that did it. So, f- yeah, I can show you. I'll send you like a picture of like the actual, like original sketch, and yeah. then I'll send you the digital one. Oh God! Well, I'm gonna just say, and you're gonna have to watch the proportion if you guys are listening. Um, but when when I look at the at the center, it looks like uh, WWE's um, current black belt. Oh no, it's not. They're not current anymore. The old Dell black belt they had. The network but, belt. The network belt. Yeah, but the size, which and this is and this is the one thing I actually like about it. Um, like really. On the sides, it looks like the X Division belt, the current X Division belt from um, Impact Wrestling. That's the, I, I hate to say this, but that's the only thing I like about that belt. I'm sorry. Um, it's just, I don't know. Fair. 
I think if it, 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 anything that has to do with Impact or TNA and the X Division, I'm I'm always for it. I'm like, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll endorse that. <laughs> I'll, I'll just make a sticker belt for the next belt. Just grab an X Division replica. And then oh, God. Pop the anarchy. Well, it wouldn't be the only sticker belt in Australia. Oh, we got or Victoria. We got a couple, got don't we? One off the top of my head. Mm. You know what I think? Design a new belt because obviously, mm. you know, I know Anarchy hasn't been running, but when you decide to rerun, Phoenix Rising, something like that, and then destroy that belt and bring the, this new belt out. Mm. I reckon. I reckon that would be very, very cool for you to do. Yeah, if you, I want to decide to do that. Yeah, currently the plan is to do uh, AEW exploding barbed wire at the end of it with like the explosion mm. in with this in a bin, <laughs> have it just explode. And it looked just absolutely terrible. Oh, you know what? I just I, sorry. Sorry to be doing fantasy booking, guys. I just, I just I just got this in my head. You know what? You know you you know what you can do. The kids like anarchy. You know destruction, all that shit, right? Destroy the belt, but mm. man, if, but put it together with ta- with tape and shit, the hardcore hardcore championship mm. that could represent anarchy. Like how. F- Cool. Yeah. What would that look like if you would do something like that? Mm. Uh, maybe. Oh. All right. Wreck my Legos. <laughs> Try not to wreck my Legos because <laughs> I've got a giant Lego set behind this and this yeah. took forever to build. Is that the uh, Daily Bugle? Yes, it is. I'm a massive Lego fanatic. I've got the 1989 Batmobile. Oh, the man. like $400 one. Yep. It's like, that's like, like 12 13 inches no i've got i've got the exact same one yep yeah i've got a lot of lego down here it's a very unhealthy amount but adrian this is this is this isn't this is an episode where i'm interviewing you this is about your company so i'm not asking what you think is cool today (laughs) hey 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 (laughs) this is is what my caught in the cross crossfire interview was like i nerded out (laughs) Like I know, I know, but I'm just, I'm just like, hang on, hang on. like I haven't, I haven't asked the question. What do you find cool that nobody else does? Like this is not, not, the, not that kind of, kind of an episode. Yeah. At least that's not broken though. Well, I'd have to, if it was broken, because we got three of these made, and so if I want to get a new one. I'd either be have to go all the way to like Geelong, or like I'd have to go to where like Ref Darcy or Gemstone live, because I gave them the other two. Oh. So yeah, so they own basically this poster, but without well, I know Gems one doesn't have broad signature on it mm. for some reason, and yeah, so. Don't break it. <laughs> I swear uh, I've nearly broken this thing so many times. <laughs> so talk me through because you originally had one venue booked and then I think was it a week before or two weeks before? It was chance? it was so when I found out about it, it was eight days before the show. What happened there? Because it it, was, it just came out of left field and I went, oh shit. You know, like that's that's really random. So it was just really like some unfortunate circumstances with like thirty eleven, some stuff that unfortunately had to happen was out of everyone's control. And I found out about it. We had because I knew DMD were running the same weekend. Um basically we had we were in the same building and we got to keep the whole DMDU kit the whole weekend there from Friday at 1 p.m. till like Sunday at 10. So, which was really, really good. Hmm. It was a good deal. The amount of cost is a lot of money. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah. Thank big thank you to DMDU for organizing that venue for me. Because without them, I would not have been WLR would have probably not run. Because yeah, it just 
wouldn't have been that fantastic. Well, I did. I, I like I said on on the reaction video to the dark match. I I love that venue. Like, mm. I I can't I can't I can't stress enough how much I love that venue. I mean I mean back when I was still in the band, uh, I I I had you know done rehearsal there. And I just never thought you could ever do something like that. And I remember the first time I went there uh, for a DMDU show, I went, F- yeah, I want them to do this here every time. It's so good. And when I found out that it was going to be in the same era, uh, same same venue, I was like, oh, this is only great. And obviously, you know, I couldn't attend. But it it hmm. it's a very intimate show, and it it, it just it just looks. It, I think it. I think if it wasn't in there, it wouldn't have been as fun, in my opinion, because it was very, yeah. very intimate. Yeah, it's very different to see it have a show in the dark at that venue. Yeah, and it, when like having one like during daytime. So, yeah, it was a it was a good venue. That's like I think that's the fourth or fifth time they've ran in there because they ran in both rooms. Mm. So in the bar room. And in that room. In the room, yeah. Which were both really good venues. So, yeah. It just, it just, it looked a lot of fun. And look, it wasn't in the, in the area you wanted to be, but, you know, you, you still got a great show out of it. And, you know, like, Mary's, Mary was just, a, Mary was just a, you know, God in uh, divine intervention, you know, to be there because, like I said, it, very intimate and it just mm. it, I, I just reckon it it's just it's just a much much funner show when you have an intimate environment like that exactly mm. um unfortunately unfortunately but fortunately dmdu's new like sort of home is going to be the hoppers venue which they're now calling it the dmdu arena mm-hmm. from now on I'm very excited for Dream and all the other stuff that DMDU has planned for the rest of the year, especially with it being like five minutes away from my house. My God, this is the first time I've had wrestling so close to my house since 2020. So there's been multiple like shows in the Werribee Hoppers, Tarnate area. And it was really, really good. I really loved the venues that they're in. Are you familiar with the Italian Sports Club of Sports Club of Werribee? Um, I, I, no, I'm not familiar with it. Okay, it's a really big venue. Unfortunately, no one can really run a show in there anymore because they changed that room into a gym. Oh, okay, yeah, so. It's like four of the old APW factories. No, actually six. That of, big. Yeah. Man, that would have been that would be a cipher sort of rise if, if they if they didn't turn into a gym to have a have a show in a room like that. Oh dude, they, they were packed. And like you could actually like it, have like a table. Mm. Like eat your food at and watch it. Oh, that's the dream, man. Like I, I, do you know how many times I, you know, I, I'll, I'll go to, a, I'll go to a show and I'm just like, I want to have, a, I want to have a Palmer, you know, and a couple of drinks with me and my friends, mm. and then just just watch watch the action, you know, because like if if you ever go to you know some boxing matches or something to actually do 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 something like that, I mm. always want to do experience that in a in a wrestling event, but sadly by by the sounds things that's never going to happen. They had exactly that at that venue. They had like Palmer's chips, pizza. Hey, you're making me hungry, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Uh, but yeah, it was a really good venue, but unfortunately, no one can really run there, and the other rooms aren't that big to run. So oh. yeah, um, yeah, I think only. Two promotions ran in there, Platinum Wrestling Enterprises, mm-hmm. um, and Showdown Wrestling. Showdown—that's a name I hadn't heard in a long time. Yeah, um, 
They even are they even still around? Or are they nah? They they stopped like right when the pandemic hit. Oh, they were the one that they were one of the handful of uh, promotions that folded during COVID. Was it? Yeah. Oh man. And oh, I remember the like. So before, so they had a February show, mm. and they announced their next show that was the same night as the was meant to be second Sammy Guevara APW show. Yeah. In May. So. Mm. Sorry, I'm tired. It's all right. Near my Um, bedtime. It's already past my bedtime. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah. So it was a really good, cool atmosphere. Um, Yeah. I'd love, if they didn't turn it into a gym, I would have gladly ran there. Man, I, I I really wish I could have experienced that. I really did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, what the one thing? Um, the show the show was uh, obviously a success. You know, everyone everyone was enjoying it. But uh, a few days afterwards, um, and I'm sorry that I'm going to bring this up. I just you know want to get the context of what happened here. Yeah. There was a lot of things that were being said on Twitter, um, and I didn't know what was going on because obviously I was going through my own you know. Sh- with my family um and eventually i you know asked somebody in the know and they told me you know a brief story but i don't know the full facts mm. what exactly was this controversy that was going on so one of the things that was 100 percent my fault when planning the show one of the things that i didn't think of was a medic because the environment that I grew up with in, I grew up around in wrestling compared to the person that called us out is that a lot of shows back then didn't have like a medic, Mm. like a first aid person. So I didn't really know. And sadly, a few people got injured, but thankfully they are fine now. Um, yeah, it was completely justified for what happened. I don't blame him at all. He was always used to that environment, and I was used to a different environment. So it's one of the things... What's the word? It Imposter syndrome. Especially, like... That's, like, when I was running that show on that day... It was imposter syndrome for me because I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what I was doing. So, yeah. Unfortunately, it we that was one of the reasons why we 100% should have, we definitely did take a break to, re, to grow, become better. And, yeah, we if we do come back, we want to come back better and stronger. Mm. Yeah, look, it's uh, it's unfortunate it happened. Uh, yeah. And look, not that I'm glorifying anything here. It's yeah. just uh, it, it it is what it is. Like you are young, you've never done this before. Just thank God no one got hurt. You know, like uh, yeah, it is what it is. And hopefully, on the next show, you learn you learn more from this one and. You go, okay, this one I need, this one I need, this one I need. Yeah. Um you know, and I, I, I and I and I hope to see Anarchy come back, honestly, because that first yeah. show was absolutely amazing. And um mate, I I um with the exception of that, that that part of it, I I thought I think it was success and mm. um yeah, I, I honestly can't wait to see what's gonna be what's gonna be next for Anarchy, that's for sure. And I hopefully yeah. you get a better belt. <laughs> uh yeah i'm not gonna bury the belt on a podcast but um <laughs> no you do you, you do you, you do you do it art you do it after after the show yeah definitely yeah. Been quick. <laughs> um so well it's all yeah. it's all fun guys i'm not i'm not being mean here i'm just i'm yeah. just we're just having some fun okay yeah i don't, I, I don't want to get cancelled or anything it's just uh, yeah bullying children naughty naughty oh 
you're not really a child, man. You're, 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 I'm meant, I am you're, mentally you're, a child. You are you are over eighteen, my friend. So yeah, you're but no mentally, mentally, mentally under eighteen, mate. I'm this many, okay? <laughs> I'm like I'm nine mentally. <laughs> Uh, to be fair, a lot of people would agree with me on that. <laughs> oh, mate! If you, if, if you ever ever met me in person, you'll know I got I got I got the mind, mindset yeah. of an eleven year old. It's just it's just uh, <sighs> it's who I am. Adrian, where can we find Anarchy Pro on all socials? Uh so we are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube at Anarchy Pro Oz. Oh, Oz, beautiful. Well, I can't wait to hear that announcement that. Anarchy is coming back, and hopefully it's sooner rather than later. Yeah. And um, look, I, I I wish you all the best, and I hope um, the next show is just going to be full yeah. of uh, you know more goals than uh, the points. Yeah. I'm 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 really selling all with my lingo at the moment. I, I... Uh, <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. Um. Yeah. The we got a lot of feedback and. I didn't. Obviously, a lot of people thought I'd take it personally. I really wanted the. I really appreciate all the feedback I got, no matter who it was, wrestlers, uh, other promoters, other people in the industry. No matter who gave it to me, I genuinely appreciate every sort of feedback I've gotten, and I'm striving to be better in like every way possible no no matter what i do no matter if it's wrestling no matter if it's film no matter it's whatever i want to be the i want to try i want to learn from my mistakes i want to be better and unfortunately this was a roadblock that we had so i'm just happy that a lot of people have given us a second chance in a way, but we really want to, you know, we want to still have people. We want to earn back people's trusts, especially the fans. Why? So yeah, we, from the bottom of my heart for everyone that shared a post, liked the photo that commented nice things about the show, whatever, Thank you. I genuinely appreciate it because this has been and WLR was one of my biggest like passion projects. And I really care about this industry. I care about everything. I care. I love wrestling and I want to do it the right way this time. I can see the passion in your eyes, man. And I just having known you uh, outside, outside this podcast and, and outside the ring as well. Um, mate, I can I know I I can see the passion in you, and I and honestly, um, you're gonna do well. You got mm. you got a, you got a, a nice support base with you, and I know you know a lot of people that you know now. They were t- you know you know taking you on taking you under their wing and and showing you the the right way to do things. Mm. And um, I'm sure the next show is not only going to be a success, but it's going to be the launch pad to the next big thing for you, Adrian. Mm. So, Adrian Kessa, thank you so much for being a part of what was cool and allowing me to tell the story of Anarchy Pro. I the outro music. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end of that episode. Want to be featured on What If It's Cool or know someone who has an interesting story that needs to be told? Reach out to me. I can be reached on What If It's Cool Business at gmail.com. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. Want more from What If It's Cool? Make sure to check out the YouTube channel where you can find the latest episodes of Mukbang Around, Reaction, and of course, the podcast. And don't forget to follow What If It's Cool on all socials. It can be found at What If It's Cool. Keep that support coming. And until next time, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.